There comes a time in boxing where the very best need to take that ultimate test. A test that usually comes in the form of facing the very man who looks back at them in the mirror. Sometimes, a test that elevates even far beyond that. I ain't trying to break you down, but for real, you might as well give up now. Think you got a chance, but I don't see how. Got a real tight grip when I hold that crown. My life Since the mid 80s, two men have managed to gain incredible momentum at boxing's highest level, destroying, undermining, and conquering all competition that stood in the gateway to world domination. And now, 35 years from the very beginning, both men will take on the most unexpected challenge of their lifetimes. A challenge to face one another in what will be one of boxing's most exquisite matchups. I'm so fast that people are looking at us saying, they gotta be speeding this up. I don't know how to put any pedal. I just know one way of fighting. So get comfy and buckle up as we take a deep dive into the Tyson versus Jones Jr. showdown that's almost upon us. It was four years prior that Mike entered the scene before Roy, but it was those four years in which he swiftly racked up countless knockouts, leading him to that memorable night against Burbank, where he made history. The popularity of Tyson grew at a rapid rate after displaying endless, ruthless stoppages within the usual first few rounds. It was more than obvious to see why. And he's going to stop the fight. It did not last 20 seconds. But in 89, a new chapter was born in the form of a fresh middleweight contender, one who brought a newly lit flair to the boxing world. Inside and outside, Roy's slick, fancy style and charismatic persona often impressed the viewers. And like Tyson, he was climbing the food chain fast. But where Roy started out his career at middleweight, the transcend all the way heavyweight to take on John Ruiz for the WBA, seemed to be one of the most propelling moments of his career. So the predictions of those who thought that Roy Jones couldn't possibly last 12 rounds in the ring with a man who outweighs him by this margin proved empty and false. This means that I am pound for pound the baddest mother. You know what? I'm gonna touch a pair of boxing gloves. I don't care what nobody say. Larry Merchant, anybody, I am the baddest. They can say what they want to say. With both men proven at heavyweight, it seemed a fight between the two boxing titans was the ultimate fight to make. But whereas back then it didn't come to fruition, 20 years on, it's about to go down. He's big as heck, and he's still Mike Tyson, and he still can punch. But six weeks, there's no way he can get prepared for this. Mm. So I said, you know what? I'll take that. Why do? Why come back and compete? Because this is not, you're not playing golf on a senior tour. You're taking punches. I just, it's, it's because I can do it. And um, I, be, I can do it, and I believe other people believe they can do it too. A collision of power versus speed, aggression versus movement and ferocity versus accuracy that would be more than enough to make any mouth water. But after dwelling on the thought from a reality perspective where both men are currently in their 50s, we still question ourselves about the moral dilemma it brings. Do we really want to see this? Or does our curiosity just tempt us far more than it should? Two of the most explosive guys to ever touch a boxing ring. At 54, I would have watched him beat the beat the miss and bad more rather than any other young guy right now because it's so exciting. You had this quote that the gods of war reignited your ego. I, I read that I got so excited. <laughs> That's a really great excuse that I can use. As we know, with age comes issues. And taking a look back to a similar scenario, just last year when Nigel Benn was on the verge of a comeback against Saki Obika, it was then and there we learned that recovery clearly plays a major factor in preparation for any fight. I had to call it quits today. My shoulders started playing up. Couldn't throw no right hands at all. But we don't doubt both men are in shape and looking sharp for their age. We've seen nostalgic clips of both men hitting the mitts, 
bringing us that dose of reminiscence from the past. But whereas this is just short played footage, a bout that consists of eight two minute rounds will be much different in comparison. I don't know what, if, uh, what are you talking about what's well, not a real fight. You got Mike Tyson and Roy Jones, and I'm coming to fight. Seemingly, it's just an exhibition. Nothing is supposed to get out of hand. But when you pair up two ring warriors that have a burning desire for destruction and glory, how can you stop either from doing what they do best? I would just tell them it's really dangerous, but when you make up your mind to do something like that, you can't tell them don't do it. They're not going to share that. Mentoring and training alongside Britain's Eubank Jr. will be doing wonders for Roy's confidence level. But unlike the good old days, his agility and fleet-footed nature certainly isn't what it used to be. Though fighting just two years ago in his latest bout against Scott Sigmund makes him the more fresher man in terms of recent activity. And unlike Tyson's retirement fight, he managed to end on a win. But this is Tyson, the man who, if given the chance, won't just stand there and fight pretty, but in turn, make things as uncomfortable as he possibly can. Oh. Tyson with a left right up the down goes for Billy again. And as we've seen from him in the past, things don't go accordingly, then the need to resort to far more extreme measures may come into play. Oh my goodness, he's got a bloody right ear. Holyfield fit by a dirty Mike Tyson. Looking back through the two resumes, both men have received their fair share of knockout losses as to his wins. Roy's started out during his second outing against Antonio Tarver after stripping too much weight too quickly from heavyweight. And Mike's, the night we'll never forget. The sport's biggest upset to date against James Buster Douglas. Oh, they by Buster Douglas. Look at this. He's not Mike Tyson down. Where attributes and physicalities are concerned, Jones has the height and reach advantage by a small margin. And accompanied by the fact he's seen more activity recently, could sway him towards being the favorite. However, going up against Mike has never been a walk in the park. And being the more natural and powerful heavyweight of the two will likely cast shadows of doubt to whether Roy will even make it to the final bell. They say the last thing you lose as a boxer is your power. And so in this case, it's fair to say that Tyson's punching power will remain more than effective, enabling him to stop the fight at any second. If he could want to put himself out there for a few minutes with everything I just said, he probably has a good chance to win by knockout. Knowing full well Roy's movement has diminished over the years, are we likely to see a center ring gunfight between the two? Or could we see something we're not expecting at all? The animals don't run. The animals don't make excuses. The animals don't cry. They fight, they win, or they die. Both will come prepared. Both will give it their all to the fullest. And as fans deserve the fight all those years ago, the matchup between the slickest and quickest pound-for-pound star against the baddest man on the planet is not going to be one you're going to want to miss. <laughs>